and welcome world. We invite you to have church with, with us today here at North Point Ministries. And I am so excited. It's Palm Sunday. And this is a day that we honor what Jesus did. It was the beginning of what we call Passion Week. And I want to welcome everyone who's joining us right now via the World Wide Web. And I believe that God has some powerful things for us. If you just now join in, share this. Hit the share button and let all your friends have the opportunity to come to church with us today. It's so cool. They don't have to even leave their home. They can have church in their pajamas. We can have church today. But I tell you, I'm all dressed up. I even got my preaching shoes on. I am ready for church. And I want to say how much I love you. And I want to thank you for joining us. And I believe that God does have something very special for you on this wonderful, beautiful, sunny day here in Midland, Michigan. I want to ask you to get your worshiping attitude on. I want you to just go ahead and get ready to worship. We've got a, 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 a kind of a eclectic set for you. And I want to begin with this wonderful song that fits right into the holiday of Palm Sunday. It's called Hosanna. If you're in your house and you like to stand, if you want to dance, if you want to lift your hands, it's your house. Do your own thing, okay? But let's just have church together. Let's worship God. Hosanna. Here we go. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we long for you, cause when we see you we find strength to face the day, in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Sing it now. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who your way among us. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Verse 2. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. Oh, yes. In your kingdom, broken lives new. You make us new. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. I want to do verse 2 one more time. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you, we turn to In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. And we're brand new, you make us new. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. Cause in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna, you're the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we 
welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Say that again. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Praise God, Hosanna. It's Palm Sunday. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope you enjoyed that. I want us to continue worshiping. We're going to slow it down just a little bit and change it up a hair. But I want you to just think about what this song says. It's an older song, and I kind of learned it as a kid. But I believe it speaks to where we are. And it, it begins by saying trust. It's all about trusting and obeying God. Just worship with me. I believe it's to bring back some memories. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear can remain when we trust and Obey. Sing it now. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet. We will sit at His feet Or we'll walk by His side in the way What He says we will do Where He sends we will go Never fear, only trust and obey Think about that, sing it now Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Say it again, trust. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy. In Jesus, than to trust and obey. Oh, hallelujah. Let's continue that and just sing this. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. 
And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace Sing it now Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth Will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth Will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey oh hallelujah 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 what powerful words you know sometimes we forget some of these songs that had so much so much meat I want to I read a couple of line, at least a line from that last song we sang, Trust and Obey, because it just says some things that just bless my heart. Let me find it. I know it's in here. Here we go. Verse 3 said, Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and and obey. Pretty powerful stuff, folks. And I pray that it spoke to your spirit this morning. And I want to just take a minute. Father, we just come to you and we thank you for this day. And Lord, I thank you for the sunshine. I thank you that I am virus free. And I believe that every person in our in our family, in our church family, are protected by angels from heaven. Now, Father, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit will move and minister and touch lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to take a moment before my announcements, and I want to read from the Bible. We started this a couple weeks ago, and we kind of got sidetracked by all that's going on, but I want to read to you Psalms 91. And as I read this, I, I'm just going to read it to you the way Carla and I and Brandon read it here at our house. And... Uh, I'm going to add we instead of he, because we're all together. And if you have your Bibles, open up. I'm reading from the old King James. But in Psalms 91, and we may do this next Sunday too, it says we. Now, of course, my Bible on paper says he, but I'm making this personal, so we're making it we. We that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress, our God. In Him will we trust. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we trust. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. We will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks 
in darkness, nor for the destruction that waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it will not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked, because we have made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the Most High, our habitation. Hear this, guys. This is powerful. There shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. Why is that? For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. They shall bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our foot against the stone or a stone. We will tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall we trample under feet. Now hear what God says to us. Now this is changed from us declaring what we believe about God. And this is now God talking to you and I. So listen what he says. Because you have set your love upon me, God says, therefore will I deliver you. I will set you on high because you have known my name. You shall call upon me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Hear that, people of God. North Point Ministry, friends and families of the Arps and North Point. God has promised you long life. I love what my sweet mother-in-law has done and, and, and my sister-in-law, Vicky and several. They just posted Psalms 91 completely written out on their doorpost, right there at the door. You got to walk past not Psalms 91 to get in their house. That's smart. Good idea, Vicky. I just want to give you a thumbs up, girl. But I want to share with you a couple of announcements, and then we're going to get ready to give to the Lord. First of all, uh, I've been going hard and strong, and uh, I've been giving you the word day in and day out. We've been having Bible studies every night at 7, and of course, we're here today, but the Lord just reminded me of one of His commandments. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And I understand that the Sabbath can be, you know, in the Jewish, it's the, it's Sunday. And, and we Christians, we, we meet on, I mean, it's, it's Saturday to the Jewish people. It's Sunday to the Christians because we start the first day of the week in remembrance of Jesus' resurrection. But, every, but the word Sabbath means rest. And after thinking about it, I, I want to go back to having a day off. And you say, well, you're, you have the whole day off uh, because you're secluded to your house. Well, no, there's, there's something about uh, knowing that I have a Bible study and I've been preparing. And you, and you don't understand, my wife sent, I went to the office, my wife said, man, you're there almost eight hours or several hours. And I said, honey, to really get a 30-minute lesson down to 30 minutes, you got to deduct so much and... I remember one great speaker, they said, uh, how long do you need to prepare? And he says, well, if, I pre if I'm going to preach for two hours, I can get ready in about an hour. If I'm going to preach for an hour, it may take me as much as two to three hours. But if I'm to preach 30 minutes, it may take me up to eight hours. And they said, why so long for such a short message? Because I want to make sure I condense it correctly. And I've been studying. I've been seeking God on your behalf. And understand, church, I love you, but I'm, I'm going to cancel my Monday night, 30, uh, you know, Monday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Uh, for a season, at least for right now, because I just feel like God wants me to have one night just to seek God for me, one day just to get in His Word and, and, and not be seeking for a lesson, but really be seeking Him for food. And so there will not be a Bible study tomorrow night. But you can always go to YouTube. We have all of our messages on YouTube. And if you've never visited us on YouTube, go and subscribe to North Point Ministries, Midland, Michigan, YouTube. And you can watch. We have way back. We have uh, a lot of archived messages. If you're, if you're just joining us and you're just getting to know us, you can go back and you can just get your spirit fed. There's a lot of great sermons God gave me. And, and they're all uh, videoed from right there at the sanctuary. But today we're here. And I want to tell you why I'm here. Because... It'd be very easy. We could have gathered everything and went to the church and, and like we did last Sunday. But the Lord just kind of dealt with me. And it's not that I like my living room better than the church. But the Lord just, and, and my wife even spoke to me and said, you know, the church is not that building. The church is the people. And folks, I'm pointing at the church right now. It's us. It's you. It's us. 
We're the church. It's not, you know, we our church meets at 5920 Jefferson Avenue when we get to come back. But right now we're meeting on face, Facebook Live and on you, you know, on that World Wide Web. We're meeting together in, in separate locations. One church, but many locations. That's us. And so uh, we're meeting here today online and I'm and I'm preaching from my living room because I'm the church when I'm in this living room. You're the church at your house. We're the church at Walmart or wherever we are. We're the church. So, announcement number one, no service tomorrow night, but Bible study will be back Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And Friday Bible study is going to be more of a Good Friday lesson, a Good Friday emphasis. I am going to have a little bit more worship than normal. Uh, it's going to, hey, I, 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 someone posted a comment. I, I got a little carried away on Friday night and kept talking about how that I was going five minutes over. And, and I think Carla said, someone said, well, where are we going to go? We're, we're, you know, we're quarantined at our house. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to turn off the clock and we're just going to have church, okay? And uh, you can watch as long as you need to. And if, if I get too long, just say bye and, and, and watch the rest later. But this Friday night is going to be our a special lesson. And I'm feeling the Lord leading me talking about the wounds that Jesus suffered on that Good Friday and why it is a Good Friday to us because he went to the cross and he suffered for us. And so that's going to be this Friday night, 7 o'clock. And then next Sunday, a week from today, you know what it is. It's Easter Sunday. And I mean, we're going to, we're going to do everything we can to make it as an exciting service. And I tell you, how can a man... Uh, who's a preacher of God's word, not be excited about Easter. He's alive, amen? And I'm feeling it just talking about it. I'm getting excited this morning, guys. And so next Sunday is Easter Sunday. We will be having church at 1045. We're going to be worshiping God. Gather your family together and come to church with us. you got all week to invite people. I'm, I'm going to challenge you. This is a, you know, we have all these Facebook challenges. I have a Facebook challenge. I want to invite you and challenge you to invite five people. Make up a post on your Facebook page and say, I am inviting you and send it out to at least five people. You can message them. You can text them. You can call them. You can contact them somehow. But I'm, I'm, I am challenged. I'm giving you the Facebook challenge, our Easter Facebook challenge. Invite five people to come to our Easter service. Now, I, I got a little ulterior motive. Please, try to get five unchurched people, five of your friends that are not, that you, 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 you pretty well know they're not born again. And you know they've never really received Christ as their Lord and Savior. But I ask you to invite, this is, this is your, I've seen the, the, the Facebook uh, oh, push-up challenge, I actually saw Rick Witter, our, our general, our, our state overseer of Illinois. I went to leave with him, and he was down doing five, uh, doing I don't know how many push-ups. He did more than I could do, but he was doing his push-up Facebook challenge. They, I've seen the plunge one where people jump in the water or where people get water dumped on them. It's a Facebook challenge. Well, our Facebook challenge is you find five people that aren't going to church normally, and you invite them to come to North Point Ministry. And remember, you can tell them you don't have to get out of your car. You don't have to put on your Easter bonnet. You don't have to put on your Easter suit. Just get ready by walking from your bedroom to your phone. They can actually watch in bed if they want to. But invite five people for this Easter because I believe God has miracles for this Easter. Amen. I'm feeling it. Hallelujah. That's all of the announcements I have right now. Oh, I got one more. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, and he is a mighty, mighty God. I want you to get ready to give. Now, remember at, at a North Point, at this time, we have really three specific ways you can give to our church. And really, you're giving to God. First of all, we have the U.S. mail. Mail is still running. And you can mail your checks or your you know, tithes and offerings to the church, and many have. And thank you so much, you that have mailed in 
by, as some people call it, snail mail. You have used the U.S. Postal Service and you have sent your, uh, your gifts to God. And thank you. Then we have an offering container right outside our door. It is secure. It is checked. Usually we try to drive by about twice a day and make sure that nothing sets in that box very long. It is secure and nothing's going to get in there, but we want to make sure that it's out of there in the safe just as quick as possible. So it's checked. So if you drive by on your way uh, down Jefferson, you say, I'm going to pull in and drop off uh, my tithe and offerings, God's tithe and my offering. You can do that. And if you will contact us, say you need uh, giving envelopes. If you'll contact us, we'll try to make a way. You can, you can uh, give us a call at the church, leave a message, or you can uh, email me at pastormikearp at gmail.com, and we will arrange somehow to get you envelopes if you really want to have, if you need a giving envelope. Then, of course, last is, and, and I believe it's prob- it could be on the screen now, you can give online, and it's really simple. Uh, Brandon actually put together an entire tutorial on how to do that. Now, we'll be back to the giving kiosk soon when we're back in our building. But right now, we have three ways to give. By mail, through the giving container, and then online giving. And uh, it's pretty exciting that God has been meeting the needs, and you have been faithful. Can I tell you, folks, you have been so faithful to give. And uh, there's all these different things being mentioned about how, you know, how to keep churches alive and, and you know, the take a loan from the bank and all this kind of stuff to keep the church doors open. Right now, I don't see that in our foreseeable future because I'm trusting in God. If the Lord speaks to me and says, reach out for a helping hand, we'll obey the Holy Spirit. But you know what he's doing right now? He's telling me, trust me. Just trust me. Remember, I read a verse last night that was so powerful about some trust in horses, chariots, and some trusted trust in horses, but I will remember the name of the Lord my God. I'm going to remember the Lord. And you know what I remember? I remember for all the years I've been alive, I've been serving God since I was 14 years old, and He's never forsook me. He's never let me down. He has met my need he has done miracles in my life. And folks, I want to tell you, my God has taken me through a lot of stuff. I remember, and uh, bear with me, like I said, where you got to go, but just sit here and listen. But as you get ready to give, or as you may have already done it, I want to tell you a story. My grandfather, he pastored in the times of the uh, Great Depression. And I heard a story, I, I, and, and I think it was my grandmother that told me this story. And she didn't tell me if it was him or if it was one of their preacher friends, but they had no food, and they were going down the road, and they looked, and there was a, a wooden box, and it was filled with groceries, and it was everything they needed. God took care of them. He pastored in the Great Depression, and God met his needs. I've seen God meet Carl and I's needs so many times, and what I can tell you is coronavirus cannot shut the doors of heaven coronavirus, the, the U.S. economy. Y- you know what? Our church has been standing there on 5920 Jefferson Avenue since the 1970s. It was built, I think, 74. And, and there's been several recessions. There's been several hard times, and it's still standing. Can I tell you, the Church of the Living God endured the Great Depression, and we're going to endure this. And we're going to thrive. In fact, I want to read you a, a, a verse, and, and it's been one of my favorites lately. Story of Isaac and how it's the middle of a famine, and there's nothing growing and there's no rain. But listen what it says. He, he's down in this land, hiding out during the famine. But it says in verse 12 of the 26th chapter of Genesis. Hear this, guys. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. He what did he do? He prospered in the middle of a famine. In the middle of hard times, he had a hundredfold return. 
I'm believing that God is going to bless you and help you. I received my uh, Edward Jones. God bless you, Tabitha. I love you, girl. And we looked at it and we went, uh-oh. But then I, my wife said, devil, you're going to give us back everything you stole and with interest. And I said, amen, Carla. God is going to take care of us. And Satan is not going to win. Amen. You know what? Right where you're at, lift up your hand and say this. Say, my God is a faithful God. And he will not forget me. I tell you, I was sitting here and I'm, I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not a, a song you worship along with. But I want you to listen to this song that I learned. And mom, I'm going to dedicate this to you. Because my mother, she always was very encouraging in my singing. And, and uh, kept me in church where I learned uh, to just love Jesus and found him as my Savior. But this is a song that I sang as a little boy. And I learned it. And Sister Lula Mae Mosier would play the piano and I would sing it. Hear this. Reach out and touch the Lord As He goes by You will find He's not too busy To hear your heart's cry He is passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. If your heart is sad and lonely, there's no joy anywhere. There's no one left to comfort and no one left to care. Would you just cast your cares on Jesus and on his arms rely? Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You will find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry He is passing by this moment Your needs to supply Reach out and touch the Lord As He goes by Listen to this verse Though a stranger to the Master And His wonderful grace if you've never found a fortune in beholding His face, well, just cast your cares on Jesus and on His arms rely. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here today, guys. I'm praying it's right where you are. I didn't mean to make this a Mike Arp concert, but I just felt that song in my heart, and I just couldn't hold back. And, and like I said, I like to dedicate that song to my sweet mom. And, you got, and, and everybody, tomorrow's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. She, I'm not going to tell you how old she's going to be. I just say she's going to be old enough to be my mama. And uh, she and I thank God for. Her. I tell you, uh, my son and Ashley had uh, their their anniversary this past week on the second, and and that was a great day. Four years together, and, and and a belated happy anniversary to them. But my mom flew up to Michigan to be at that wedding, and she got back, and on her birthday four years ago, 
she had a massive heart attack, and we almost lost her, but God said no. And, you know, and I, I prayed a prayer that day, and I want you to think about this. I said, Lord Jesus, I believe you love me too much to take my mom to heaven on her birthday. And I said, devil, you ain't got the right to take my mom. And when I just got the call that she'd coded and, and they'd lost her and they wanted to try to bring her back in surgery, I got a call from my brother-in-law, Dan. And hi, Dan, if you're watching. Um, I just started praying. I said, no, devil, you can't take her. You can't take her. You can't take my mom on, on her birthday. And the Lord pulled her through. And my mom's just a, she's still, still as feisty and as healthy. And we wish you happy birthday tomorrow, mom. And, and we thank God. Okay, are you ready to get in the Word? I've visited enough, and I've, I've uh, sang, and I'm ready to preach. And I hope you're ready to receive. I tell you, I got something powerful. Originally, when God gave me this, as I was studying out these verses, I thought that this would be a, a lesson for my leadership team. And guys, I appreciate you so much. You guys are fantastic. We have here at North Point, if you don't know our church or know much about us, North Point Ministry has one of the greatest bunch of folks. Uh, and they're just so faithful. You know who you are. You guys are faithful. And uh, one of you know that even in late at night, you just came to the, come to our rescue. You're such a faithful bunch of people. And I had this this these verses and this this study, and the Lord spoke to me, and He says, "No, you're raising up a church full of leaders, and you're raising up a church and, and preach this to the whole body." Because I had something totally totally different as I headed to the church yesterday and as I was preparing and the Spirit of God re totally redirected my message to this passage and, th and this study and so I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it because I'm going to talk to you about pressing in pressing in to the next level getting to that place where we go from where we are to a brand new level I understand I've heard Joyce Meyer say new levels new devils but let me tell you what, with another level comes a greater anointing and comes a stronger presence of God in your life. And so tonight, or today I want to talk to you and I want us to go to Mark chapter 9. I'm going to be looking at uh, some verses, but we're going to start today in the ninth chapter of Mark. And we're going to look at, and, and, and I know it's Palm Sunday and we'll get to some verses that have to do with Palm Sunday. But this is, we're going to talk about next level living and, and pressing into that place to where we say, God, I'm not satisfied where I am. You know, I'm believing, man, I already feel it. The anointing is strong today, guys. It's a strong anointing this Sunday. And I tell you, I know that it's, it's easy to say, well, we're going through this and I'm confined to my house and, and I've lost my job and I'm, you know, and I'm wondering, this is the time to press in. Get closer. Move up. Because in Mark chapter 9, oh, I tell you, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. I hope you can feel it, Brandon and Carla. It's in, he's here with us, guys. The Holy Spirit is here today, sweetheart. He's here, guys. And I believe he's right where you are. He's coming right through your phone. He's coming through your device. He's coming through your computer. He is here right now. But in Mark chapter 9, verse 2 through verse 7, it says, Now after six days, Jesus took... Peter, James, and John, and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. Now, you, if you're underlining, your, if you underline things in your Bible, you might want to underline this, those words, by themselves. He took these three and he got them, they went away from the group. Folks, as you press in, you might actually walk away from some folks because you're getting to a new level. But he says, he took them on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. That means he was changed right before their eyes. There was this transformation right before their eyes. And look at verse 3. His clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. That verse is saying no amount of Clorox, Purex, bleach could ever have made his clothing that white. So here's Jesus, and he's transformed. And they see Jesus, and his clothes glow like neon lights, but brighter than neon. And in verse 4 it says, And Elijah appeared to them with Moses. And they were talking, uh, and they were talking with Jesus. Here's Elijah and Moses, and the two of them are talking with Jesus. 
Verse 5, Then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. And verse 7, And a cloud came and overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Oh, hallelujah. Get your Bibles. Lift them up right now. Say, this is my Bible. I believe everything it says. I am everything it says I am. And I have everything it says I have. And I can do everything it says I can do. Today, I am a believer. And as a believer, I'm also a receiver. So I believe I will receive everything, absolutely everything God has for me in Jesus' name. And may God add His blessing on His Word. Now, here you see a story where Jesus goes to a mountain and, and God does something tremendous and there's a voice comes from heaven and all this. But when you think about people who were in the life of Jesus... The followers of Jesus was divided into these five distinct different groups. Now, the most intimate group is what we were just talking about, Peter, James, and John. That would be what you would call the inner circle. And I want to call that the next level, these men that went to an extra level. You, over and over, you see Peter, James, and John being mentioned as the inner circle, uh, his very closest associates. This is the next level. That was the first group, those three. And they were part of a group, the second group, 12 disciples. They're mentioned, and of course one was even Judas, but they, and what we might call this the leadership team. Then the third group was a group of 70. These were 70 that he sent out. These were workers and staff and people who were, they, they were part of the team, but they weren't part of the 12, and they definitely weren't part of the three. And then the fourth group is what we would call followers and supporters. These are people you could depend, if Jesus is going to be preaching, you could depend on them to be there. Several ladies, uh, Mary Magdalene and different ones, were always there. And they, there were people who were givers. They gave their, their offering and they supported his ministry. They were financial partners with Jesus. And they were part of this group. They, they weren't the 70 necessarily. They may have been, you know, they were part of the, 70 was in that group, but they weren't the 70, they weren't the 12, they weren't the 3. And then lastly, there was this group we might call the multitude or the crowd. Now these are people who show up with needs or they bring someone with needs. They, and I heard a teaching recently by a Rick, Winner, Rick Renner, who is a powerful teacher, and he has done his study, and he said that when Jesus preached, his crowds normally averaged 20 to 40,000 people. So at any given occasion where Jesus had a group and he was preaching, the crowds were up to 40,000. The day that he fed the 5,000, there were about 40,000 people present. So see, when you talk about there's 40,000, there's crowds of 40,000. In, in those crowds are blind. In those crowds, there's cripples. There's, there's, there's lepers that get healed. In that crowd, there are all these people, and they're that major group, and, and they're people that came with them and their families. So there's the inner circle, there's the 12 disciples, there's the group of 70, there's followers and supporters, and then there's the multitudes. But the inner circle, that was the group that would take their relationship to, with Jesus to an extra special level. Church, I believe God's calling you to move up. I believe God's calling you to press in. I believe God's calling you to go to a new level. It's time for new levels. And it's time for fresh and new anointings. And, and for that to happen, of course, there's a couple, a couple, three questions we might ask. There, and I call it the three R's connected to those who are going to step in and step up. Those that are going to begin to serve God in the next level. And in this, in this we're going to answer these three questions. Question number one, what are the requirements? Everybody say requirements. What are the requirements of those who desire to take their Christianity to the next level? More or less, what does it cost if you're going to go to the next level? The, the second R is this. What are the responsibilities 
attached to those who hope to live and serve God at the next level? Or what do those in the next level do? What, what's going to be, you know, what, what, what are you going to have to do? What are the things that you'll have to do if you get to the next level? And the third question and the third R is what are the rewards slash results of making this next level? What happens? You know, what do you gain by going to the inner circle? What do you gain by saying, I'm pressing in and I'm going to do more for God than I've ever done? And I'm going to seek God like I never sought God. And, I, and I'm going to pray like I never prayed. And I'm going to give offerings like I've never given offerings. And I'm going to serve God with a new zeal and a new fire. What do you get from that? Those are the three questions. The requirements, what are the requirements, what are the responsibilities, and what are the rewards? I want to begin and, and, and look at this first question. Oh, I feel, uh, man, the Holy Ghost is here, sweetheart. I feel the presence of God. I, it's hard to stay in my chair because I'm about ready to run, guys. I just feel his presence so strong. But let's go ahead and start with, with question one. I, I got to get this covered because you need to hear this. This is going to change your life. If you're in the room with somebody else, if you're, if you're with somebody, turn to them and say, listen, this is going to change your life. I'll give you a moment. Just turn to somebody. You may need to message someone and say, listen, this is going to change your life. You may want to, you may want to write it on the comments. Underneath. Listen, folks, this is going to change your life. Because, guys, it is. This is going to change your life and you will, if you listen to this and you receive this and you'll let this soak in, you will never be the same person because God's taking you to a new level. And once you get there, you're not going to want to come back. You never see Peter, James, and John complaining about their position or saying, I want to relinquish my hold on this inner circle. No. It's, it's a life worth living. Question one then. What is required if we desire to be in his inner circle. What is, what is the required? You know, what must be done if we move to the next level? What's it cost us? I want to take you to Mark. We were in Mark, but I want to go to Mark 1 now. The first chapter of Mark. And we're going to look at uh, verses 16 through 20, okay? Now, in verse 16, here comes Jesus. It said, and these are, this is recorded in the other Gospels too, but we're using Mark today. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Now look, here's where he meets Peter. And here's where he meets James and John. So let me read verse 19 one more time. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the boat mending their nets. They were just doing their jobs. They're on the job and he shows up. Verse 20, And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. Okay? Now, when you think, I ask you, what's required? What's it going to cost you? Well, the next level requires something really big, and that's change. It's a change of life, a total change. Because think about it. With these men, they were never the same person after meeting Jesus. Um, they left the fishing business and went into the preaching business. Can I tell you, I, I've told this testimony. After, you know, after God called me to preach, you know, I was down at Lee College, and I was preparing to be a school teacher. The funny part, I've told this a lot, and many of you think it's funny. I had made up my mind after high school that I was going to be a disc jockey. I was going to be a radio announcer. With this voice, I don't know if it, was, it would ever happen. God knows. But I, I wanted to spin the hits. I wanted, you know, I, at that time, there was a guy named Wolfman Jack. He was probably the most famous radio announcer anywhere. And I wanted to be that DJ. Spinning the hits, talking for a living. And, I, and then I found out that, you know, you go two years to college at least or go to broadcasting school and, and you make the minimum, minimum wage. And I thought, man, I need more than minimum wage. And, and I knew that I loved to teach Sunday school and I'd always been a pretty good talker. And I thought, I'll go to school to be education. I'll be a school teacher. And I have done that in, uh, as a bivocational pastor. 
And I went, th- went there and I got to school and God calls me to preach. Well, I'd already set everything up for an uh, education major. And then I get called to preach and I went to my advisors. I need a new advisor because I'm not going to be studying education. God just called me to preach. I want to be a Bible major. And so what I did is I, I changed my life. That experience changed my life. Can I tell you that when you, when you begin to uh, go to the next level, when you begin to go in toward that inner circle, there's going to be changes in your life. There's going to be total changes in your life. And, and, and it's going to, you're going to be a different person because you can't stay where you are and go where you need to be. you got to move. And, and so it requires a total change of life. It requires of us a redirection in every area of life. Now notice this. When you begin to seek Him with all your heart, and when you begin to go to the next level, that, that you want to acquire suddenly a brand new set of goals and, and ambitions. I mean, all of a sudden, the kingdom cause becomes your cause. And the things of God become your things. And, and church becomes everything because that's where you get equipped. And, 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 and the world becomes your harvest field. See, there's an, you got brand new goals, brand new ambitions. And with that comes this willingness to be changed in whatever way God desires. You say, God, your will be done. You do to me what you've got to do. You do in me and you do to me whatever has to happen. Because why? I'm going to another level. There has to be this willingness for God to transform you. There has to be this willingness to say, God, I'll let you do what you got to do. And I'm not afraid for you to work on me. And not afraid for you to change me. I'm not afraid for you to transform my life. Because Paul put it there in, in Romans 12. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We got to say, God, transform me. And with that, comes a brand new total a brand new total set of new priorities his will becomes your will his kingdom becomes your life and in this inner circle your heart is different than the average joe you say i can't be what i used to be and i can't live like i used to live i can't go where i used to go oh hallelujah there's, there's a change. Something's happening in me, and I am going to... Folks, your, your neighbors uh, see it. Your family will notice it. If you desire, and if you are ready, and you are ready to, re, to fill the requirements and say, God, change me. I want to serve God. I want to go to the next level. Can I tell you something, people? I don't believe we can stay where we are and get through these next few days. And, and it may be several days because our world has suddenly changed This is the 9-11 moment in our history of our nation. It's another 9-11 moment. And America is going to be different. Our attitudes are going to be different. And you cannot continue to live in that lukewarm state. This is a time where we fire up. And this is a time where we go to the next level. And and, and I'm not preaching doom and gloom. I'm preaching victory. But I'm telling you, the same way that when a young man leaves high school, and signs up to play college football. It's a different world in college football than it was in high school football. We found that out with Dustin. When, when he ran in high school, there's requirements. But when he went to Lee University as a, as a cross-country m- member of their team, it was harder, it was rougher, it was totally different. He had a coach saying, you don't eat this. You, don't, you need to stay slim and trim. He liked those little skinny runners. Can I tell you, living, in, living last year is different this year. It's going to be different in 2020 and the rest of 2020. God's taken us to a new level, and we got to move into the inner circle. And you may say, well, I've just been a church member. I've just been a church attender. Folks, it's, that, that day is over. Now you've got to be a sold-out disciple of Jesus, and God's calling us to that. You can't be the average Joe. Not if you're going to live in the inner circle. But let's go on to question number two. Not, not only what is the, are the requirements of this next level, what are the responsibility for those who might move up to the next level? Those that say, I want to do it. Well, now I'm going to take you to some verses that have to do with Palm Sunday. Luke chapter 19. Let's go to Luke. I'll turn there with you. Luke 19. Let's find it. Uh... And we'll go to verse number 29. Here we are. And it came to pass, 
when he drew near to Bethanage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two. Everybody say two. He sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as they said to him. But as they were loosing the colt, the owner of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And of course, we know what happened after that. Jesus got on the back of that young donkey, rode into the city, and people worshipped him, and he rode in as a triumphal king. Now let me explain. What are the responsibilities of those who might move up to the next level? Here's what these people had to do. These two had to do. Number one, they, we, they are to go, you're to go where you're told to go, do what you're told to do, and say what you're told to say. That's what happens. When you say, God, here I am, and I'm going to be available for you, and I am ready, and I don't want to live down where I've been. I want to press into a brand new place. God's going to start sending you places. And you got to be willing to go where God says go. you got to be willing to do what God says do. God may be challenging you to do some things in the kingdom that you never thought you'd do, but that's what happens at the next level. The whole group didn't go after the donkey. It was two of them. And then when they got there, they were told what to say. When the man said, what are you doing? Taking my donkey. They said, the Lord told us he needs it. You do. So here they are. You take a note, write this down. There's three responsibilities of an inner circle believer. There's three. There's three easy things. Responsibility number one, you must serve God with unquestioned obedience. You know what that really means? The excuses are over. Quit giving God excuses. God says, read your Bible. And folks, right now, if oh, you better be in the Word. If I can tell you anything, get in the Word. Read the Word. I dare you, read the Word every day. No less than 30 minutes a day. You need to be reading the Word. And stop giving God excuses. Quit questioning, why would I have to read the Bible? Why would I need to do this? Why would I need to do that? Unquestioned obedience means no more excuses. Get down to business and stop telling God why you can't do it and just do it. In fact, that goes to my next point. Number one, serve the, serve the Lord with unquestioned obedience. Number two, we have to serve Him with a holy boldness and a freedom from fear. What's that mean? Like I was going to say, that's just, that is a just do it spirit. God's looking for some people that are just they won't sit around and say, why do I need to do this? They just say, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to, in, your, in your Facebook challenge, get bold and invite 20 if you want to. Invite your entire family group. But here's the deal. we got to get boldness and you got to stop being afraid. And right now there is a spirit of fear that has circled our globe and we live on a planet that is possessed. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And I tell you this morning, there is no fear here. In this house, there is no fear. And I believe that there is something happening in the spirit to where if, oh, oh, whoever you are, I feel it right now. Fear has had a grip on your heart and it's been beating you, uh, beating you half to death. But in the name of Jesus, you're free right now. You're free right now. Fear go. Fear go. Freedom from fear. If you're, going to, if you're going to go to the inner circle, you've got to obey Him. There's going to be times He asks you to do things and you don't have a clue why, but you just do it. There's going to, there, you're going to have to do it with a boldness. You're going to have to break out of your little bashfulness. Well, that's just not my personality. God didn't ask you if it's his, his, your personality or not. He just told you to do it. And sometimes you just got to do what He says. Number three, and this is really important. We have to have a. We need a commitment to the spirit of excellence. I've got a good friend right here in Midland. I, I like the man. He's a good guy, brother Barkley. I love you, brother. But at his church, they stress, and they and he's been teaching for almost forty years at that church, the importance of a spirit of obedience. And if you don't think they're not they're not a, an army of God, just visit sometime. I've got family connected to that church, and guys, you are amazing, because brother Barkley's been preaching a spirit of excellence. 
Can I tell you what? I believe to go to this next level, there has to be this commitment that we are going to embrace the spirit of excellence. Now, let me make sure you understand. Excellence is not perfection. You'll never be perfect. You'll never be perfect, guys. And because you're doing something excellent don't mean you're doing it perfect. It means you are doing your very best. You, you, you know when you're finished, you couldn't have done any better because you did your best. You know, I'm standing here right now, and I have studied, and I've sought God, and I, and I believe I'm giving Him preaching with excellence. We've worked very hard to, to turn our living room into a sanctuary, and, and, and we have, we're using technology, and we're trying to make this the best worship experience we can give you under the circumstances we're in. But can I tell you, God should get our best anyway. But if you're moving to the next level, and you begin to grow, see, that's the thing I talked about, the high school foot play, football player and the college football player there is a level of expectation from the coaches they're looking for an effort they want your best effort they don't want you coming to to a spring practice all out of shape they expect you working out all year long they want your body toned and in shape long before you get to the practice can i tell you that god is looking to us and he, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind me. Paul said it. You forget what's behind you. Stop worrying about and get out from under condemnation and say, today, today, I begin to give God my best. I'm going to pray with my best prayers. And I'm going to study with my best efforts. I'm going to live with my best, be, best effort. I'm going to give God my very best. Because I want to tell you something. The inner circle is filled with people who give God their best. They give God the best they've got. That's, that's, what you, that's the responsibility. That's what comes with being an inner circle believer. You, you serve with unquestioned obedience. You walk in a holy boldness and a freedom from fear, and you live with a commitment to a spirit of excellence. Now, last question. Whew, I've been preaching today. It's been exciting. Been hard, like I said, it's been hard to stay in this chair. What are the rewards of stepping into God's inner circle? What, what, what happens? What do you get? You know, you, you say, well, does the, does the rewards actually make, you know, is it worth it? Can I tell you it's worth it? There are three things happen. Those who live in the inner circle, those who press in, and they really truly said, I want to live at the next level. There's, the, there's three things happens in our life. Number one, and it's been a lot of notes, but this is in stuff you need to know. And the reason I've given you this is because I believe you can do this. But if you will pay the price, you will get the reward. And the first reward is this. Those who live in the inner circle, those who stretch and press themselves for the extra mile, and say, I want to go to the next level, you get to see things other people don't see. You get to see things other people don't see. Peter, James, and John, they went with Jesus up on that mountaintop. And they get up there, and all of a sudden, something happens. Remember, Jesus starts glowing like he's a glow worm. You know, he, he's, he's, he's on fire. He's bright. His clothes are bright or white, they need sunglasses to look at him. And standing right beside him is Elijah and Moses. And they, need, they get to see Jesus having a conversation. And they get to hear God say, this is my son. The others didn't. You know, the others, others got that second-handed. And I tell you, there are things in your life that all of us remember being able to see that maybe other people, and, and it's so much better than hearing it, seeing it and hearing it second-handed. But to those people that will say, I want to go to the next level, I believe you want to go there. I believe, I know, I know Carla's going, she's already went there and we're, we're living there. Brandon's living there right now with us. He's in that next level life. But we get to see things others don't see. You get to see things you just hear about. You get to, you get to see things that you hear people write in books about. And you get to see things with your eyes. You don't hear their account. You get to give your account. Folks, there are miracles waiting on you. There are mighty things God has and there's experiences God wants you to walk through. And if you never move to the next level, you'll never get to do it. 
You ask the man who's holding up the Super Bowl trophy. And you say, was it worth the work? He'll say, it was. You, you listen to the man who's given his Hall of Fame speech. And you might ask, was it worth the extra work? And he'll say, it's worth it. Can I tell you, folks, it's worth it. You'll begin to see things that others don't see. Secondly, you'll get to do things others will never do. Remember Peter? He's in a boat. It's a storm. They see a guy walking across the water. First they think it's a ghost. Then it dawns on them it's Jesus. And Peter says, If that's really you, bid me to come to you. And Jesus says, come. And Peter jumps out of that boat. Talking about next level. Talking about inner circle. That's just him and Jesus. He hops out of that boat and he starts walking on water. Can I tell you something? Eleven others didn't get to do it, but they got to see it. They saw something nobody else. They saw something the other 70 didn't see. And they saw something the multitudes didn't see, but they didn't get to walk. That was Peter. Can I tell you that when you commit to the next level, God starts doing things that you never thought you'd ever get to do. I told you. I've told you some of my testimonies. Just a couple quick recaps. When the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to go to Carl Perkins' house and lay hands on him. Carl Perkins, blue suede shoes, the king of rockabilly in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He lived in our city. And the Lord said, go to his house. And I said, Lord, I'll go. And God gives me the time. And I drive up that Thursday afternoon at 1.30. And there he's driving up his sidewalk, his driveway on that big John Deere tractor of his. And he stops and, he lo- and I get out of the car and he looks at me and says, what can I do for you? And I said, hello there, Mr. Perkins. My name is Michael Arp. I'm pastor of North Jackson Church of God. I'm here because the Holy Ghost told me to come here and pray for you. And he looked at me right in the eye and he says, well, praise the Lord, brother, do it. And for 45 minutes, I sat there, I stood there and talked to this rock and roll legend, prayed over him, tears running down his face. I got to lay hands on him and pray and, and speak over his life. That happened because I was willing to do something that went beyond my flesh and stretched me. That whole drive, I could hear the devil. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your time. But the voice of God was louder than the voice of the devil. And I got to experience that. When I walked into that, in that hospital room where there's a dead man laying there, Selmer Wood is laying there dead, and the Lord says, Speak life, not death, victory, not defeat. In the name of Jesus, rise. And I got to see him that next day, sitting in a chair, alive. God prepared me for that. And it happened in my living room. This sweet angel in this room with me right now was there when the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm getting ready to do something in your life that you never thought had happened. I'm taking you to another level. And, I, and, and, and I told, I've told you the story. Carla's over there. We're having devotion. She's standing praying. I'm standing praying. And I just walked over and I took my fingertip and I touched the top of her head. Barely touched it. She fell on the floor under the power of the Holy Spirit. Laid there for probably half an hour speaking in tongues. And the Lord said, I'm getting ready to use you. Folks, when you say, God, I'll go to the next level, you get to do things others don't do. Mary Hamlick had called every pastor she could find in Jackson, Tennessee, to go lay hands on her dead brother. Couldn't get a hold of anybody. Thank God I got her. She got a hold of me. I take no credit. I give it all to God. But I was willing to go to the next level. You get to do things others never will never do. And thirdly, and this is the great part, and I'm going to be closing with this, you get to be a part of the story. You get to be a part of the story. You know, you, you put a blanket, insert your name there. Because here's the thing, you're not just hearing the story all the time. You're not just hearing testimonies all the time. You're not just hearing how this happened and that happened. This was great and that was great. You get to live the story. And there's stories that go with you and there's things you get to experience and there's miracles you see with your eyes and your name is inserted. Peter's name was inserted. He walked on water. Peter, James, and John climbed to the Mount of Transfiguration. Can I tell you that there are stories that God has made for you to fit into. There's places that God has for you to go. There's people God's called you to help. 
There's things God has called you to experience. And if you say, I want to stay right where I am, you'll never get to join the story. But if you say, God, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Take me to the next level. You'll get to be a part of the story. And the same way that I'm sitting here telling you what God's done in my life, God will set you before an audience. It might be your children and your grandchildren. But folks, God's got a story with your name attached. But you'll never be a part of that story unless you step up to the next level. You've got to move into the inner circle and say, God, I'm going to press in. A little woman with an issue of blood was tired of being sick after 12 years of constant pain and spending every penny she had. She said, I know that if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she pushed herself through. Can I tell you, it's not, it's not instant potatoes, folks. It's not just a drive through window. It's pressing in. And it's laborious, but it's worth it. Hallelujah. It's worth it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that I said what you wanted me to say today. And I said it, and I feel your anointing in this room. It's thick. I feel your presence, Lord. It's thick in this place. And God, right now, I ask you to speak to the hearts of your people. Speak to the hearts of your people. And God, move them to that place where they want to be next level Christians. In Jesus' name. Now don't hang up, guys. I'm not finished. Don't turn me off just yet. I want to ask you something. Where are you on this journey? Have you been part of the, the multitude? Just part of the crowd? Just one of the bunch? Or have you been a supporter? You know, you're a tither and you're an attender. And you can, you, you're at all the services. You know, Jesus had people there at every one of his services. Or maybe you're one of the 70 and you work children's church or you take a turn at nursery. You're one of the 70. Or you might be you might be one of our leadership team watching me right now. But have you been willing to, to really press in, say, God, I'm ready to be part of the inner circle? There was only three. You say, why was there only three? Because it's not something everybody will buy into. It's not that Jesus didn't want everybody. It's just not everybody is willing to make the sacrifice, to pay the price. Are you there today? I'm asking you right now. If you're ready, ready, don't you say this little prayer. Say, Jesus, take me to the next level. I'm willing to make the journey. I want to pray for those. I, I, I feel like the Lord is allowing me to release an anointing, a next level anointing. And if you're ready to receive it, right where you're at, put your hands out like I'm doing mine, like something's being handed to you, and let the Holy Spirit just fill you up. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I release a new anointing, a fresh dose of your Holy Spirit an impartation from heaven. And by faith, gifts are going to flow. Miracles are going to happen. Ministry is going to be released. And in the name of Jesus, there's people being healed right now, Father. There's people being called right now. Hear the word of the Lord. For this day, saith God, I am challenging you. I have spoken directly through my servant. And I am challenging you to make the change, to submit yourself, to obey my voice, and allow me to move you, saith God, to a new place. For this is an hour where status quo will not work, where minimum effort will not produce. These are desperate days, but they're wonderful days. And I have taken you to this, taken you to this place to challenge you and move you into a place in me that will transform you forever. So receive my touch and step into my presence and let this life be your life. Let what you heard about from the preacher be your life and let the story include you, saith God, for I desire to use you.
Oh, hear the word of the Lord, people. That's a now word. This is a time where God's doing something. It's hard to close this service. I feel the presence of God. I wish you all here. I'd break the social distancing rule and I'd lay hands on you and I'd pray for you. Because I tell you, the presence of God is in this house. Hey, I want to tell you, family of faith, not family of faith, that's my people up in Charlevoix. I love you, family of faith. North Point Ministries, talk too long. <laughs> now I'm saying, don't forget, tomorrow night we're not going to be on the air. But join me Tuesday night. We're going to keep talking about divine healing and things like that. We, I, I got some stuff in my spirit I can't wait to, t- to share with you. I call you blessed in Jesus' name. I'll see you next time. God bless.